This is your one and only FireSpark81 with your daily dose of video goodness. And today we're gonna talk about five mistakes you may be making as a caster in Elden Ring. Let's get to it. So first off, let's talk about spells. You're gonna see a lot of things from a lot of other content creators talking about how the Glintstone Pebble is your best spell, blah, 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 efficiency, all this nonsense. Yes, yes, yes. We know it does have a really good mana to damage efficiency, and that's great but it is not the be all end all of spells. There are a lot of different spells in this game and some of them have some utilitarian uses that are just golden. I mean, they're absolutely fantastic. And playing this game as a caster, you have to kind of think outside the box of normal playing. You're not running around with a strength build, just bashing everything in the face. Sometimes you need to get a little creative because in most cases, you're probably going to be pretty squishy because unlike strength builds, you're not just pumping all of your stats into vitality vitality, strength, and stamina. Casters unfortunately have to split those points up a little bit more than other builds. So you have to get kind of creative with your spells, even if they may not be the most efficient in your arsenal. There are a ton of different spells for you to use, everything from creating poisonous mists to putting landmines on the ground to spamming swords that fire from a portal from some unknown dimension like a Gatling gun in the air. All of these can be used in lots of different ways to make your traversal through these lands much easier. Spells also have different affinities and some things have resistances to some spells and weaknesses towards others. So if you're not dealing a lot of damage to something, that may be another reason to mix up your spells a little bit. Try something with some fire or a gravity spell or something like a mist spell because whatever you're fighting may have a resistance to whatever spell you are using. So mess with the spells, play with them and get creative with them, especially if you're having a difficult time in an area or a difficult time with a boss. Mix it up a little bit. Try new things because you have a lot of different spells and some of those spells may work a lot better for some bosses than others. And talking about those stats and how we need to mix them up a little bit more as casters. Let's talk about not putting all of your points in intelligence. You need to split those up a little bit and spend some points into strength, faith, and arcane. This is going to allow you to mess with pretty much all of the spells that are in the game. Now, there are some higher things out there that use a lot more faith than you want to put into faith because you do want to put a majority of your points in intelligence. Don't get me wrong, but you also need to put some points in dexterity. You also need to put some points in stamina and you need to put some points in health so you can at least take one hit if not two. But you should also put some points into strength as well so that you can use a decent sword in your offhand for those rare occasions when you need it. You also need points into faith in order to use the dragon spells. So you have all of these different spells that you can use, but you can't use any of the dragon abilities unless you have some points in faith. And there are also a few really good sorceries that rely on faith as well. You can also later on in the game get the golden seal, which will allow incantations to scale with your intelligence, allowing you to cast incantations. And incantations are faith-based, so having some points in faith allows you to dabble in those a little deeper than you would if you ignored it altogether. Now, I'm not saying put a lot of points in these because there are ways to boost those with certain trinkets, but you should put at least 10, if not 15 points into strength, faith, and arcane. Putting points into arcane will also help increase the amount of drops you get, which can help you find some rarer staves. They're not the best staves you can use from what I've seen so far, but you know, you may want them for whatever reason. Another mistake you may be making is not keeping a good shield and sword in your offhand. There are times where this just pays off and there are a few different swords that you can use, one of which I advise getting a hold of. You have to defeat a magma worm in order to get it, but you can get it relatively early on as soon as you are capable of beating this magma worm and that is the Moonveil Katana. 
It adds blood buildup, so it can deal massive amounts of damage after you stack enough blood buildup, and it scales really well off of intelligence, even better if you upgrade it. It starts out at a C. That's pretty good. There are some other good options out there, but because this one has the blood buildup and scales so well with intelligence, it's the one I'm recommending. Next, you want a good shield, anything that's going to give you 100% physical damage reduction and as high as any of the other reductions you can get a hold of. There's a bunch of random options out there. Just search on YouTube and find one that you like, find one that's easy enough for you to get a hold of and go for it. But having a good shield in your hand and a good blade in your hand are invaluable for different situations. There are times where you may be out of mana and you can't drink a mana potion and whatever you're fighting only needs one or two more hits. There's other times where you can just come up behind things and one shot them with the blade and not even need to worry about wasting the mana in order to get to a big boss because you need to save your mana for that fight or whatever reason. Having a good shield is also really good in some boss fights to help block incoming damage. So you really want to make sure that you have a good shield because it's just, it's situational. A lot of things in this game are situational, so make sure you're running with one. And that leads us into the last thing that you may be doing wrong, and that is sometimes range just doesn't cut it. There are some fights out there where the boss has really good gap closers or is designed in a situation where you got to be up close to them and hugging them. And just because you're ranged doesn't mean that you are excluded from those mechanics. So you have to get out of the mindset that every fight that you get into needs to be a ranged battle. Get used to getting up close and personal with some things. For example, Ronalia is an extremely difficult fight to do at range. She has a lot of tracking spells that get better the further you are away, and her laser beam of doom becomes harder to dodge the further away you are. If you are up close and hugging her the entire time, she is a much easier fight to deal with in her second phase. And this is one of those fights where having an up close and personal weapon that is a good blade that has blood buildup on it in your offhand can become super handy. You don't really need to block with her with a shield. You can just equip that blade in both hands and get right up on her and just start slashing away. There are also some fights where you can benefit from using your shield in your offhand instead of your blade and using the Karian Slicer spell instead of using a normal sword. So if you're having problems beating a boss at range, try to mix it up a little bit. Grab your shield in your offhand, get up close and personal, use the slicer to attack it, and if it's not dealing enough damage, swap over to your katana, equip it in both hands, and just start wailing away. You may find that the fight gets a lot easier when you try one of those tactics. All right, that's pretty much all I have for you for this video. Let me know if you found it helpful down in the comments section. I'm always eager to hear what you all have to say. And if you have any other tips for fellow casters out there, let us know down in the comments as well. And if you found this video helpful and informational, consider hitting the subscribe button and the notification bell so you can be notified when I upload other videos. I want to give an absolute massive shout out and thank you to my supporters on Patreon for making this episode possible. Y'all are absolutely amazing people. If you would like to join my elite crew Patreon supporters, please check out the link in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought. If you're shy, you don't like to comment, just hit that thumbs up button and show your support. Until next time, thanks for watching.